Sometimes people think one of the one of the common misconceptions with grounding is they think that the the, the intention of grounding is to provide a path for for electricity to go as like a safety valve. That is not the intent. What we're doing is if we have this system, let's just use 120 volts. Let's say we want to know that this system is at 120 volts. We know that because we have the difference. We say that the ground is zero. So there's no electric potential in the ground. And that allows us to establish that our, you know, our system has a, an electric potential of 120 volts. Remember, electricity is always going to try to get back home by its path of least resistance. The path of least resistance is not going to be the ground. If I were to, if I were to draw this system, and if you were to think of a, of a house, so this is a house, and you've got in your house, you've got uh, coming in from the, uh, from the power company, you've got a power pole, you've got a telephone pole outside. And on that telephone pole, there's a transformer, it steps down your electricity, and then there's two lines that are running to your house. There is your neutral, and there is your hot. There is no grounding electrode. There is no safety ground coming in from the utility company. And then you've got your, your main panel in your house. And within your house, we have three conductors that are run. We've got our, uh, we've got our grounding. Let's say I've got a, a toaster over here. And I've got, a, I've got my hot, I've got my neutral, and then I've got my safety ground. And, and the intent of this is, is not that, and, and again, all of this is going to be connected to the earth. So we've got the telephone pole outside is connected to the earth, and then our system in our house is connected to the earth. And the intent of this isn't that if there is a short in our system, let's say that this line breaks at some point along the way, the intent isn't that the current then travels back through the safety ground here, back to the telephone pole this way. Because remember, that electricity is trying to get back home. It's trying its hardest to get back home. It would potentially travel that path if it had no other choice, but the intent the intent of that grounding electrode is that if there was ever a situation where there was current noticed in that green line, then we've got a circuit breaker inside of our, inside of our uh, house, and that circuit breaker will trip. And that circuit breaker is going to trip, and it's going to cut off that circuit, and at that point, we're not going to have any more current going through that circuit, and that's a safety protocol. That's a safety mechanism meant to sever that system from the grid. It is not intended to, um, it is not intended to provide a path for that current to get back to the earth. The intent of uh, being connected to the earth, again, is to provide a pressure uh, or a voltage differential between the earth, which is at zero volts, and our system, which is at whatever voltage we have our system running at. 120, 110, uh, 220, you know, it depends on where you're at and what you're working with, but you can have, you, you, that's the intent of grounding. And it's very, very easy to misunderstand this and confuse this, and lots and lots of people do. But, uh, but with our system, the reason why we have all of these points, all of these bonding points, is to make sure that our system, at any point, if we have current running through this green line, that's a bad thing. That will inevitably trip our ground fault protection, which again would probably be located inside of our inverter.